I'm Gary Katz from the Katz Road Show, and this is Carpentry Magazine. And I don't know how many times I've heard stories about framers complaining about finished carpenters and finished carpenters complaining about framers. I mean, I've been one of them. I mean, it's almost as bad as contractors versus architects. Sure, rough openings for doors are a flashpoint, and so are bowed studs and, hey, where the blank is the backing? but stairs are probably one of the biggest points of contention. Jed Dixon says that when a finished carpenter or a stair builder gets to a job and sees the rough stair already installed, he should save himself a ton of swearing, shimming, and hair pulling, and just tear the thing out and start from scratch. But there's a smarter, faster, and better way. Education. The first problem with stairs is that all the risers have to be within a quarter inch of each other. If you don't know the finished floor elevations, good luck solving that problem. And the easiest way to avoid a big mistake with any stair is to start with a story pole, no matter how good you are at visualization and arithmetic. And the second problem with laying out stairs and landings is cumulative air. First, I'm going to demonstrate Jed Dixon's method for making a story pole so you can work from the finish to the rough. Yeah, knowing the height of the finished flooring is critical, just as it is for setting doors, casework, and even installing baseboard. And watch what happens because I'll get the cumulative air pretty quick. So I bet this looks kind of weird. This is a set. It's the same stair set that we use at the Cats Roadshow at every presentation we do. And we've done this stair presentation at lumber yards all over the country. The set's really handy because we can get right to the issues that really matter. Notice that the stringers are hung from a ledger board that's actually supported by the tails on the newel posts down here. In other words, the stringer comes all the way back to the back of the tail of the newel post and this 2x12 ledger or hanger, whatever you want to call it, is bolted right through the face into the tail of the newel post. So that way the outer stringers can bolt into the side of the newel post and all the intervening stringers like this one here can be hung off the ledger or hanger with Simpson stair hangers. Let me show you an illustration here to explain why I want to drop my top tread, one riser, from the top of the deck. The International Residential Code, the IRC code, requires that rake railings allow no space between the bottom rail and the tread and riser that's greater than six inches. If you cut the stringers with the top tread flush to the upper floor deck, you can't meet that code requirement without installing an additional newel post at the nose of the top tread. That's why it's so important to drop the stringer so that the top tread is one riser down from the upper floor deck. I hope those illustrations helped explain what I'm talking about here about dropping the stringer one riser. And now that we've got that straight, let's go make a story pole. The first thing you have to do is you have to know what the drop is between the elevation of the deck, the top of the deck, and where the stairs are going to land. Not directly down from the deck because there could be a huge difference in elevation between the two. And in order to do that, you can take a level if you want and set it on top of the deck and hang it way out here and then measure down to the ground from that level if you can hold that level level. But what if the stairs have to come out 10 feet? You can't hold a level out that far. So that's where a laser comes in really handy. All you have to do is turn the laser on, take your tape measure, and measure to the laser line. That's it. And an even easier way is don't even use a tape measure. We make too many mistakes when we use tape measures. Start using your story pole right now. Set your story pole right where your stair is going to land and make a mark right on that laser line. And I'm going to write laser right there so I know that that's what that mark represents. But that's not really the elevation of the deck. That's the elevation of the laser line. The laser line is about, look at that, an inch and three quarters above the rough deck. 
So I'm going to have to subtract that from this mark right here, and I'll do that next. Before we go lay out that story pole, I bet there's a few people out there that are thinking, hey, how do you know where the stringers are going to land if they're not already in there? Well, it's really easy. You just have to do a little estimate. And the estimate is fairly simple, but the first thing you have to understand is you always have one more riser than you have treads. We're going to do some arithmetic here, and this is important. Notice that there's a riser at the end and the riser at the beginning. And that means you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven risers and only one, two, three, four, five, six treads. It's going to always be that way. It's kind of like wainscoting. When you put wainscoting on a wall, you always end up with a style in each corner and the panels in between, so you always have one more style than you have panels. So let's look at this measurement here. So that's like 49 inches to the top of the deck, and actually the decking's gonna put it at about 50, but let's use 48, because that's a real easy number. If we take the 48 inches and we divide it by eight inches, which is the maximum riser height, we'll get six risers. But we know this is over 48 inches, so we're going to probably end up with seven risers. If we have seven risers, how many treads are there? One less. So you're going to have six treads. The IRC code is kind of funny. I mean, it's funny if you Google it. Areas around the country interpret the code differently. In some places, eight inches is the maximum rise. And in other areas, seven and three quarter inches is the maximum rise. The tread depth is interpreted differently too, but in most places, the minimum tread is 10 inches deep. So if we're gonna have six treads and they're each 10 inches, that's 60 inches, five feet. So all you have to do is measure out 60 inches, five feet. And that's pretty dang close to where those stringers are gonna land. All right, I got the story pole on my stand here. This is a stand that we use at all the road shows so that you can see better what I'm doing when I'm laying out the story pole. And later I'm gonna use the same stand to lay out the stringer too. So I'm gonna strike a really clean square line for where the laser is. And then I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna measure down an inch and three quarters from that line. And that's the actual top of the rough deck. And we can label that rough because we, what we really want is the finish. And the decking is one inch. So I'll take my square and I'll just measure up from there one inch. And I'll scribe another line right there. And that is the top of the deck. Remember, Jed Dixon said you got to work from the finish back to the rough. And that's what we want to do with the story pole. So now let's go down to the bottom and detail that. Down here at the bottom, I want to play a game. I want to make this a lot harder. Let's say that you're doing a stair onto a concrete slab like an old one. And the owner's going to come in later on and they're going to lay brick two and a half inch thick brick right on top of that concrete. This is so typical, you know, because if you didn't know what the finish was when you're cutting the stringers, you could really screw this up. So the brick is two and a half inches. All we have to do is measure up from the bottom of the story pole the two and a half inches and score a line right there. That's the top of our brick. Now we know what the finish to finish dimension is. If that's the finished top of the brick, all we have to do is measure from that elevation all the way up to the top of the finished decking to get our finish to finish drop. So to make this easy, because it's a presentation, I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take a speed square and clamp it down right to the top of the brick right there. And that way I can hook my tape measure on it and we can measure from the top of the brick to the top of the deck. And look, it's 47 and 7 eighths. That is the finish to finish dimension. So now we're gonna to turn to a calculator. This is my desktop construction calculator. Most of you should have a calculator on your phones too or a smaller construction site type calculator. 
If you don't have a calculator, then get one. This is a tool that you absolutely have to have. And I'm not kidding. I'm going to demonstrate using this calculator why it's so important. And it's not just for stair layout. I use this for wainscoting, balusters, squaring up buildings, squaring up rooms. It's endless the amount of stuff you can do with a calculator and get dead on right the first time. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here how important it is to use a calculator to avoid cumulative error. And I'm going to talk about that. So let's look at this. I'm going to take the calculator. I'm going to enter 47 inches and 7 eighths. I'm upside down, so it's hard for me to find these numbers. And I'm going to press memory plus. And you can see right there that came up on the memory. So now that I've got it in the memory, I can use that number over and over again and not have to re-enter it. I'm going to take that number first of all, and I'm going to divide it by the maximum rise allowable, which is seven and three quarter inches. So I'm going to push divide. Let me find that number here by seven inches and three, whoops, slash four and press the equals button. Look, 6.1. 77419. Well, you can't have 6.17 risers. It has to be an even number. You could round down to six, but if you round down, that means that your riser height is going to go up and you can't exceed seven and three quarters. So that means you have to divide by seven. So let's clear the calculator. And since I've already got that 47 and 7 eighths inch rise, overall rise in here, I just have to push recall memory plus. And I'm going to divide that number now by 7. And the number, the answer is 6 and 13 sixteenths. Now here is where we're going to start talking about cumulative error. That isn't the real number that the calculator is actually working with. The calculator has already begun to simplify the number for you because you're a carpenter. Usually the smallest increment that you work in is sixteenths of an inch. So the calculator is rounding off a number that's actually the sum of that, of that division. It's rounding it off to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. Here's what the real number is. I'm going to push inch and it's going to convert that number to actually the decimal and it's 6.839289. It's an irrational number. It repeats itself over and over again. And there's no way in the world you can use that number to lay out your risers. You've got to use something that's on a tape measure. I'm going to push the inch button again. It'll take us back to 6 and 13 sixteenths. I've got a little gauge block that I cut here. This gauge block is exactly 6 and 13 sixteenths, precisely. I cut it really close on my miter saw, and I'm using a 2 and 5 tenths pencil right now that's sharp. I mean, I could poke a hole in my ear with it if I'm not careful. I'm going to remove this speed square for a second, and I'm going to take this gauge block, and I'm going to lay it right on the line here. And then I'm going to score a line on the end of it, and I'm going to use this gauge block just like I would when I was a kid, laying out <laughs> like wainscoting again or dental blocks or something. And I'm going to step my way right up this story pole, making very light lines because I'm going to end up erasing them all. Bear with me because this is important. This is the whole kind of truth to cumulative error. And I'm being real careful. I'm trying to get that gauge block right on the line every single time. Oh, look at that. I'm way over that line. I'm over that line by almost a quarter of an inch. One of these is going to be off over a quarter of an inch, probably the last one if you use a gauge block. That is cumulative error. Where did it happen? How did it happen? Well, two things caused it. The pencil line, and if you're using a carpenter's pencil, you'd be way off. You'd be much further off. And the fact that when you use a gauge block, you line it up with the pencil line and you want to see that pencil line. You don't actually cover the pencil line, which is what you ought to be doing. But then you'd be drawing another line and you'd be off again. Let me show you another way to look at this cumulative error problem. I'm going to take 6 and 13, 16, 6 inches and 13 
sixteenths, and I'm going to multiply it by how much? By seven. That's how many risers we have. And I got forty-seven and eleven sixteenths, not forty-seven and seven eighths. So no matter what you use here, whether you use the calculator and you multiply 6 and 13 sixteenths by 7, or whether you use a gauge block, you're going to end up way off. And imagine, what if the stringer's on the inside of a home, and we're talking about a 10-foot drop, you know, like an 8-foot ceiling or a 9-foot ceiling plus a 12 inches for the floor diaphragm. Wow, you could end up off 3 eighths of an inch, a half an inch, and one riser. That's not acceptable. The calculator, if you use it properly, will help you avoid all of that. And here's how you do it. So let's get this square back on here because we're going to actually pull measurements right now for every one of those risers, but we're going to do it precisely. We're going to use the calculator to help us. So once again, I'm going to go recall memory plus and that brings the 47 and 7 eighths inch number up, the finish to finish rise. Then I'm going to divide that by 7, and that's going to give us that 6 and 13 sixteenths number, which is really in the calculator. It's really that ir irrational fraction. Then I'm going to push the plus button and the equals button to get my second riser. So the first thing I'll do, first thing I'll do is I'll pull my tape and I'll make a mark at 6 and 13 sixteenths, which is right there. That's the first riser. Then I will push the plus button and the equals button, and I'll get the second riser, which is at 13 and 11 sixteenths. I'm pulling from the same location, 13 and 11 sixteenths. Then I'm not going to push the plus button anymore, because if I did, I'd be instructing the calculator to add this number to itself. We don't want to mess around with that irrational decimal that's in the calculator's memory right now. We want to instruct the calculator to continue adding that irrational decimal to itself. So all we have to do now is push the equals button, 20 and a half inches, pulling from the same location, 20 and a half inches. This is the same way I lay out wainscoting and balusters. Equals button again, 27 and 3 eighths. Same location, 27 and 3 eighths. Do you see what's happening with this number two? It's going from sixteenths to eighths and back and forth because the calculator, once it reaches the point where it can add in a full sixteenth of an inch, it does. So all of these risers are going to end up being within a sixteenth of an inch of each other. I'm going to push the equals button one more time, 34 and 3 sixteenths. Same thing again, 34 and 3 sixteenths. I almost forgot that one. And then the equals button again, 41 and a sixteenth, 41 and a sixteenth. And there's a good example. How can you get 3 sixteenths and 3 sixteenths to, inch, to equal an, a sixteenth, but it's actually rounding off that decimal to the nearest sixteenth of an inch, and I'll push the equals button one last time, 47 and 7 eighths. So we're right back to the very top of the finished deck. And that is the way to avoid cumulative error when you're laying out your story pole. Now I'm just going to take my square and I'm going to run a line across each one of these. And then we've got one more right here. And we can pull this out of here. And lay out that last one. There's the first riser. Now remember, this is the top of the decking. So I'm going to lay out the rough now. I'm going to work my way back down one inch on each one of these because I want to go right back to the rough tread. And this is exactly what Jed Dixon meant when he said you've got to start with the finish and work your way back to the rough. And now I'll score a line here on every one of these risers 
And this is the rough. This tells us exactly where the rough tread has to be cut on every single stringer. Now let's look at this. Why would you go to so much trouble if you only got five or six treads? I mean, you could do this all in your head. Well, look at the problems we've solved. We've solved this problem of having enough riser at the bottom to accommodate future brick. We've solved the problem of having equal rises between every single tread, no matter what the thickness of the finished decking is. And, and this is really good, let's say you got a really tall stair and it's got a landing in it. How do you decide when you're cutting your rough stringers where that landing needs to go? How do you find the precise elevation of the landing? You use your freaking story pole. You pick the rough elevation for the riser cut on one of these treads. And that's your riser height for your landing. And everything will lay out perfectly. And what if that landing right here is so big that you're not going to put like a typical tread stock on it, one inch tread stock. Instead, you're going to put three quarter inch underlayment or subfloor and hardwood flooring. Well then, you take your finish dimension, your finish elevation, and you lay out your rough from the finish. I'm going to take the four inch mark because it's right in the middle of my square. I'm going to measure down three quarters of an inch. That would be for the hardwood flooring. I'm going to come down another three quarters of an inch for the subfloor. And that is the elevation of your rough landing right there. You can mark it right on your story pole, carry your story pole over to the wall and mark your wall and know that when you build those stairs, all of your risers are going to be dead on.